With the pending beatification of Cardinal John Henry Newman, Anglicans and Catholics alike are looking back and reflecting on the legacy he left behind for Christianity. Born during the first half of the 19th century, Newman was baptized in the Church of England and was part of the evangelical movement there until 1845, when he converted to Roman Catholicism. Over 150 years later, Newman is up for beatification by the Catholic Church. It's a move that some believe could pave the way for a clear and concise dialogue between Anglicans and Catholics. It should stress in this beatification his gifts as an Anglican that he brought to the Catholic Church and what those did to help further the reconciliation of Christianity. Father William Franklin is a professor at the Angelicum University in Rome and a Newman scholar. He says Newman's influence by and large shaped the mold of both Catholic and Angelican doctrine as we know it today. A focus on the church as a divine institution, a focus on bishops as successors of the apostles, a focus on the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist, a focus on the Eucharistic sacrifice. All of these are things which Anglicans hold in common with the Catholic Church. And one of the reasons we hold them in common is because of the deep influence of Newman. And it's this influence that continued to shape the Catholic doctrine for years to come. Some people say he's one of the theologians of the 19th century who set the stage for Vatican II. For example, he wrote a very important uh, short treatise on consulting the laity in developing doctrine, on the important role of the laity. This is a very important Anglican principle, which he brought into the Catholic Church. It's widely expected that Pope Benedict XVI beatified John Henry Newman in England during the spring of 2010. He recently approved the miracle that paved the way for his beatification.